candidates on their preparedness towards the WASI examination. We'll be bringing you details of that particular story uh, in a Zimbabwe arrests 100,000 for flouting lockdown rules, says police. And uh, later in business, Danqua Institute denies involvement in collapsing of financial institutions in the country. We'll be bringing the details of these stories, including sports, entertainment, and international news. We'll go for a short break. We'll be right back. Now moving on to our very first story for this afternoon. The West African Examination Council has released the new timetable for West African Senior High School Certificate Examination candidates following the approval from the Ministry of Health. The examination begins from Monday 20th July 2020 with project works whilst the theory papers will commence from August 3, 2020. On Pan-African Television's visit to some senior high schools in Accra to ascertain the preparations of candidates towards the examination and the toll COVID-19 have had on their studies, some students shared the experiences. So, can you tell us your name? Oh, please, my name is Karim Ebenezer. I'm the head boy of the student. Okay. Um, I want to know some of your preparations towards your upcoming examination, final year examination. How are you guys prepared in this pandemic? All right. Uh, I'll say it's not, it's not really easy, but, you know, um, before um, every student prepares for every exam, um, I might say examination is not really, you know, easy. And prior to this pandemic, fears and, you know, tension has been created in the school. Students are not getting some mind, you know, hearing that a case arising every day, you know, also at home. The debate of whether we should go or we should be in school has also been you know, a fear for some of the students. So I would say that preparation is going on smoothly, but just that some small fears are. Okay, I would say that one is dependent on individual students because before we went on for the corona break, um, we were almost done with most of the syllabus. But uh, most of us went to men. We didn't take our studies serious. But then as, um, when we came back, our teachers started trying out their personal best for us. So I would say it's dependent on the individual students themselves. Okay, so my name is Precious Asama. Um, I'm a student of grade one class. Okay, Precious. Looking at this pandemic, uh, I want to know if you are really prepared for this exam. Yes, I am. Prepared. You are prepared. Yeah. Okay, what shows? Um, our teachers has put in much effort to equip us towards these examinations, and then they've given us the procedures like the steps and how to answer the questions and all that and then I've also like read my books like my notes and yeah I'm ready for the exam. So you are you are you are okay? Yeah. You are okay? Okay. Thank yeah I'm doing my best. Okay and has your teachers put in place any measures for this coming examination? Yes they are really helping us. They okay. are really doing their best. In what way? Some spend extra hours with us at our school. Mm -hmm. No, please. They said we should put on our nose marks in social distancing, so we are doing a new Upon arrival at the Achimota, St. John's and Accra Girls Senior High Schools, students and staff adhere to all the safety protocols laid down by President Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado. Students observed both the social distancing and face mask wearing protocols on the various campuses visited. All efforts to get the headmasters and headmistresses of the various schools visited to brief the media proved futile. Away from that, the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition has called on the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, and all authorities involved in conducting this year's WASE to ensure that the students write the examination devoid of casualties, especially during this period of COVID-19. 
Markets in the 29 Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies, MMDAs in the Greater Kwa Region yesterday. Well, let's go for a short break. We'll be right back. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome back. You're still watching Pan-African News right here on Pan-African Television. We're coming to you from our studios in Abilinkpe, 48 Swanika Street here in Accra. Now let's continue with the stories. The Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition has called on the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, and all authorities involved in conducting this year's WASI to ensure that the students write the examination devoid of casualties, especially during this period of COVID-19. Now, the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, in a press statement, acknowledged the Ministry of Education, Ghana Education Service, teachers, parents, guardians, and all stakeholders towards education delivery in Ghana. The coalition admonishes all staff and students to pay critical attention to COVID-19 safety protocols in order to stay safe and healthy during the examination. Welcome back. Now let's go over to the phone lines and speak to our central regional correspondent on uh, the preparedness of some, you know, candidates who are writing the WASA in the central region. Afro, can you hear me? If you can hear me, tell us 
uh, what is happening in the central region? Have you taught some of the schools? And how is the WASE ongoing in those schools? Uh, uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon to our chair, Blue. Uh, yesterday, at the uh, Hello? Go ahead. Yes, uh, yesterday, at the WASE Africa examination, uh, all that they will be starting the examination. We have to go on as part of our agenda to ensure the sentiment and how prepared the students were. So I went to a Chinese college in the Cape Coast where the uh, assistant headmistress took me around the school campus for me to know how prepared the students are and how the administration has put things in place. So it took me to the main class where the exams were actually going to be held, where you can see that the decks were being arranged. Normally, in examination days, you can see that there is a bit of distancing from students' cells to ensure that students write the exams uh, uh, without cheating. But you can see that in this case, it was a bit different. Mm. That this person was a bit uh, different from how it used to be. So you can see that the school has actually put down processes to ensure that the students are really safe. Before you enter the class, I mean the examination hall, so you can see that they're putting methods in place. You wash your hands, you clean your hands with the hand rub before you get inside the examination hall. And she taught me that the classroom has already been uh, disinfected before this week, so the safety net of the students are well ensured. So parents outside should know that their work are in a good hands. Now, have you interacted with some of the staff, and what did they tell you? Come again? Have you interacted with some staff of the schools you've actually visited, and what did they tell you? The staff? Have you interacted with any of the staff of the schools you have visited? Can you hear me now? Can you come again? I can hear you. I'm saying that have you interacted with some staff of the schools you have visited? And what did they say? Oh, oh okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I spoke with uh, the head of department yesterday at the Infant Open College. And he also assured me that the students uh, are well prepared because, you know, because of the pandemic, these students have to go home and come back two months before their examination. So they make sure they took them through all they are supposed to go through before mm. the start of the examination. So we have to go and ask some of the students mm. about how uh, uh, prepared they are towards the examination they are about to start. And they also spoke very well, ensuring us that they are fully prepared, their teachers are taking them through the necessary things they are supposed to go through all the uh, um, topics that were supposed to be handled before the examination, they've done it, and they are fully prepared to write the examination and pass. How many schools have you visited in the central region? I've visited three schools so far. Yesterday, I had to go to Adifado College, hmm. where I was actually denied entrance. Why, so, why were you denied entrance to Adifado College? Yeah, they said they are not allowing any visitors to enter the school. But you are a media man, and then and, and so what explanations do yeah, they ascribe so to I, that? I try to let them know that we are there not to, to, to do anything or carry out nothing, but we are there to make sure that parents uh, uh, feel so much secure about whatever that is going on. Because we all know that we are in a pandemic, and mm. some parents are actually not happy about their work being on campus. Mm. So coming there, we just want to come and make the parents out there know that their words are in a good hand. But then, all my explanations were not accepted because they said no media people are supposed to enter. Not actually necessarily media people, but no visitors are to enter the school campuses. Uh, apart from Addis Adel College, which other schools did you visit? Uh, Chupuprato, yeah. Chupuprato, mm. senior high school, so I have to go there. Mm. And uh, family, uh, they said, we can't go to the classrooms, mm. but the head of department of the um, digital lab, 
who was actually coming to take their exams had to talk to me that the principal is not around and they can't permit anybody to go to the school because that has been the directive given to them that nobody should grant any interview apart from the uh, principal. All right, thank you so much, uh, I felt for speaking to us. We're so grateful. We will come back to you for uh, other updates uh, when the need be. You're still watching Pan African News Radio on Pan African Television. We're coming to you from our studios in Abilinkwe, 48 Swanika Street here in Accra. We'll be crossing over to other regions and speak to some of our correspondents to also tell us what is happening in their various regions with regards to the Wase examination started uh, yesterday, uh, we've been speaking, as I said earlier, uh, to our central region correspondent. He's been telling us uh, what is happening in some schools in the central region. Uh, he went to some three schools already, and according to him, all the protocols are well adhered to in the schools he has uh, visited so far. We are moving away from that particular story. ECOWAS mediators trying to resolve Mali's political crisis have proposed a power-sharing government in a new constitutional court. The ECOWAS delegation held a marathon weekend of talks in Bamako in their latest bid to calm tensions and called on the government, the opposition and civil society to work together. 50% of the members of the government will come from the ruling coalition. 30% of government officials will come from the opposition and 20% of government officials will come from the civil society. President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita had already made a similar offer which was rejected by the opposition protest movement. Head of ECOWAS, Jane Claude Cassibru said it's urgent to set up a government of national unity on the basis of consensus and taking into account the recommendations of the inclusive national dialogue and the following distribution proposals. The demonstrators are insisting that the president resigns, saying he has failed to address jihadist violence, corruption and the country's economic challenges. Mali has been hit by protests that erupted last month, demanding Keita's resignation. The international community has been trying to defuse the crisis. Now, the presiding member of the Adenta Municipal Assembly, Joseph Oday Boy, has revealed that the number of drivers and traders who tested positive for COVID-19 in the Medina and Adenta area are very overwhelming. He disclosed this to Pan-African News during the disinfection of some markets in Accra. As part of the local government ministry's initiative of curbing COVID-19 in communities across the country, all public places were disinfected and cleaned by security officers and Zoom Lion Ghana. Presiding member for the Adenta Municipal was grateful for the exercise and believes that the exercise will help halt the high numbers of positive cases among drivers and traders in the area. Disinfection exercise that is being undertaken by the local government and Zoom Lion. I think it's very, very, very good. Because looking at how the uh, uh, virus is spreading, if we do this thing continuously, I don't think uh, the virus will uh, spread. It helps check the spread of the virus. They are disinfecting nice station and uh, markets. Is that okay? And what do you have to say about it? It's very, very okay because uh, a study or a chart have shown that um, most of the people that are uh, coming out positively are all food vendors and then drivers, especially Adenta. We tested the uh, food vendors and drivers. The number that came out positive is, you can't even imagine, it's big. He reacted to the decision by some traders to disobey the directive not to trade during the exercise. I, I was told that they, they were informed, but you know human behavior. But uh, I think largely uh, you can see the place has been locked. But it's just that the people coming from the inquiry, inquiry, they said for them they didn't get a uh, wind of the information. That is why they are in. But I think we've spoken to them and they are leaving.
Now, a joint police and military operation on the adherence to COVID-19 protocols on the streets of Accra has led to corporates cleaning and distilling choked gutters as part of the local government ministry's initiative of cleaning public places after disinfection by Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. Before we bring you footage to this particular story, now let's cross over to the northern region and speak to our northern regional correspondent. Good afternoon and welcome to Pan-African News. Tell us uh, or update us on uh, the Wasi examination in the region. Hello? Yeah, yeah, hello. All right, thank you so much. Can you, can you tell us what is happening with respect to the Wasi examination uh, in the northern region? Yeah, some school has started in northern region here and some are waiting on Monday to start their exam. And uh, yesterday, I, as I was talking, like I was at the Buba constituency, and today I'm at Tamale Central and Tamale North. Mm -hmm. And when I visited the schools that are writing the exam, everything was on point. Mm -hmm. Like, there the, the wasn't a lack of anything that would describe the exam in Tamale here. Are students adhering to their safety protocols? Hello? Hello? Are students and staff adhering to the safety protocols in the schools you yes. have visited yes. so far? Yes, please. The social distancing protocol has been observed well in various schools. And uh, all of them, all of the students are on those maps. So all the protocols have been observed in Tamale here. How many schools have you visited in the northern region? I visited about four schools. Mm. And two were not writing. Two are to start their exams on Monday. Mm. And two are writing on just because the visual art students are starting their exams first. All right, okay. Thank you so much for uh, updating us on uh, how things are faring currently in the northern region with respect to uh, the Wasi examination. Away from that, a joint police and military operation on the adherence to COVID-19 protocols on the streets of Accra has led to corporates cleaning and distilling choked gutters as part of the local government ministry's initiative of cleaning public places after disinfection by Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. Markets in the 29 Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies, MMDAs in the Greater Accra Region yesterday, Monday, July 20, 2020, benefited from a massive cleanup exercise with assistance from the police, military and Zoom Lion Ghana. As part of the exercise, persons who flout the law on wearing face masks were compelled to buy masks and join the cleanup exercise. At the Ghana East Municipal, the Public Relations Office of the Assembly, Bells Hackman explains the essence of the exercise and what the assembly is doing in educating the public on the safety protocols. When you come to the Ga East Municipal Assembly, through the efforts of our Municipal Chief Executive, Honorable Genetula Simensa, we've come out with an action plan which enjoins all Municipal Security Council members, that is the music, uh, which she chairs. We have also decided that the police, especially, will join in the sensitization activities. So we have a program with our radio and TV stations where they go there and talk to the public, educate them, sensitize them on the executive instrument EI-164, and uh, letting them know that it is an offense to come out of your homes, go out without wearing face mask. So this activity is ongoing. Aside that, the police again lead the music to mount checks at various points on our roads and in the markets where they make sure people who don't wear are not wearing the mask buy some instantly and wear them. And after that, they also make sure they do some light work. Some traders also share their frustration with the media. Some 
ene yen hu mna bi omo dia ba se obi ni nam ho epra nti bi mu gushu press yesi ha na ye dia bi ye ni hu ni ye eto ade ni hu ni ene bi ye hu ye ye fi ha enti omo be me won ni ana bi bi e tsa ye hu bi bi sa ha bi bi sa nko so me hu ye bi bi sa e ko so no omo fo obi o si yesi ha na ye ti mu eto ade no so ye ni hu ni no eno na ka mu wa se mi amu ye dai bi bi sa ye ye so ye bi sa so de bi e twa ticket omo jina so bi bi ha pe so mu ti ba mu twa tu si di fa si di ni e twa Everyone Now, police in Zimbabwe over the weekend confirmed the arrest of over 100,000 people for violating regulations aimed at curbing the spread of coronavirus. The Zimbabwean police further disclosed that the figure spans from March till date. Around 1,000 people were arrested in the last two days for unnecessary movement or for not wearing face masks. Restrictions have been eased slightly in the country where more than 1,500 infections have been confirmed. Critics have accused the government of using the measures to target the opposition and arrest activists, a charge which police in Harare denies. Opposition and civil society groups are mobilizing for nationwide protests on 31 July to demand that President MSM Nangwagwa steps down. Under current regulations, all Zimbabweans returning from abroad are required to remain in quarantine for three weeks at a government-approved facility. According to the police, a total of 276 people have fled quarantine centers, including some who had tested positive. State television has reported that almost 30 of them had been arrested and would be taken to court for exposing their families and communities to the virus. They included two men who had infected seven members of a family. Confirmed cases in the country stands at 1,611 with 472 recoveries and 25 deaths. Well, you are still watching Pan African News right here on Pan African Television. We are going for a short break. We'll be right back. Hello? Okay, uh, what's your name? Why? My wife can't even send a message. You know, she's going to move to Hello? What's happened? It's a chunk, but Biogas, swimming pool, London West in Yenaso, Yeyebi, Freye, 0240-333-111, Anase, 0244-144-822. Me and Pa Anene, you want swimming pool on me see? Me want to, me want to be a family drilling like I want to. Family drilling! Go fast as you are last, sir! Me and we are malaria so no dank gastro care herba mister on hobe to dank phyto care herba mister koku ebe ye hu aduma ma wapo no wapo so won tutu dank extra care herba mister obenya ho den ne wetimi anante me ka fo dank no nyina e dia ma mo na ebe nya dwe nya bi we pharmacy shop ana herba shop oso pe dank nu a ye be ma obi ba chomo number ye sen 0266593330 enro yi oba pemfo oba ma akora no fo anya akora woni mfie du mienu ntimi no FDA, I guess I get the craft him or adjust him, say, eh.
has varieties of herbal products for your dreadlocks and natural hair. Hi, I'm Mikesh from Salon. Now, keeping natural hair with uh, dreadlocks, no, I idea when you make a boma, me know. Now, you know, so she and I say maintenance and a lack of knowledge, no, and I'm a yeah, me a kind a brofo and a or bruni, a low a blowfui to pollute our natural hair with the harsh, dangerous chemicals. In that same way, I am not in Tina, you starting training. Teaching, preaching the gospel according to maintaining natural hair with this lovely natural organic products. Now, say, say, no, you be school now, ma'am, say, bra, my best year on Sano, a juma, for you to be one of the best locticians in the whole world. world. It's an ajuma way, it's an ajuma, Osia, Odi Kobe, Bia, it's an say, to be a loctician, no, it's a job the world need you today. Na natural hair ya dey be as e say no e papa na amamfo aji atumpa no stigmatization no bad uh, names for dreadlocks and natural hair enti no me bo ko say bra na be sua sa nim dey we a e fa dreadlocks sisters locks nubian locks afro locks cultivated locks organic locks micro locks caucasian locks twist locks real lock Hand twist, comb twist, flat twist. Some normal way you know, brana be sweet. Who sweet way? Now you share with more than one. Let me add you. It's an say because training academy, no. Your branches be pre. You gonna ha. Let me a employ. And I say, let me a so a employ outside the country. If you want to learn all the techniques in natural hair and dreadlocks, please pick up a form in any of our branches. Also, for bulk purchases of our natural herbal products, please call 0542-126072 or 0277-454287. Mikesh is the king of dreadlocks. You don't know Stonewall representing and as a dreadlock to the world. B.O.T. Your natural hair is the crown of your glory. Mikesh! Why you pay? Welcome back. Now, finally, on the local front, the National Democratic Congress (NDC) has condemned alleged military invasion of Maxon supermarket and filling station at Teshi without a search warrant from the court. The party said the building owned by Benna Ayuku, the party's parliamentary candidate for Lejokuku, housed his private office which was being used by the constituency executives for the ongoing voter registration exercise as coalition center. According to the party, the two Joseph Mensa and James Na were detained at the Accra Regional Police Command for some military personnel allegedly ransacked the office of their parliamentary candidate, Benjamin Ayiku Na. The party alleged that some armed military officers invaded the office of their parliamentary candidate at Teshi over suspicion that he was registering voters at the said office. Speaking at a news conference yesterday, the Deputy Greater Accra Regional Youth Organizer of ENDC, Amos Blessing Amosi, denied such allegations. He further alleged the military team confiscated the desktop computer and the party's electoral printout from the various registration centers for the first day of the third phase. Amosi said in the process, Joseph E.J. Mensah, the constituency chairman, and Mr. James Na, the constituency organizer, were arrested after they followed the case to the Central Police Station and calls for their release. 
Meanwhile, Colonel Eric Agri Kwashi, the Director of Public Relations of the Ghana Armed Forces, said the issue was under investigations. The ongoing registration exercise is tainted with reported cases of violence at registration centers in the region. Shamefully, these acts of violence were and are being engineered by state-sponsored brigands of the MPP with the support of some state security officers who have sadly been reduced to internal security of the new patriotic party. The latest of such vicious display of state-sponsored attack on innocent citizens, which has necess necessitated this press briefing, ladies and gentlemen, was an unwarranted, reckless, jejune and superfluous invasion of a supermarket and filling station, Maxon supermarket and filling station, owned by our parliamentary candidate for Lejokuku constituency, Honorable Ben Ayikuna at Anumantu Teshi on Sunday, July 19, 2020, at about 7 o'clock p.m. For the uninitiated, Maxon Supermarket and Filling Station, like any other filling station, is a public place where people from all walks of life are at liberty to drive or walk in to buy items of their choice. It is, however, important to point out that the same building houses the private office of our candidate and incoming MP for Lejokuku, Benaiku. Needless to say, it is open secret that strategic political meetings of the PC and are held there. It is therefore not out of place to spot known political heads of the NDC there on any day. That's all for the local stories. Up next is business. Welcome back. Now let's look at what is happening in the world of business. The executive director of the Dankwa Institute, Richard Ahiagba, has denied allegations of conniving with the new patriotic party government to collapse some financial institutions in 2019. His denial comes at the back of a video circulating on social media accusing the Dankwa Institute of being in bed with the new patriotic party government in 2017 to collapse some financial institutions in the country. The financial sector experienced the cleanup in 2019 when the central bank, Bank of Ghana, revoked the licenses of over 300 macrofinance companies and macrocredited or money lending companies. The revocation, according to the bug, was in pursuant to Section 123 Clause 1 of the Banks and Specialized Upsy Taking Institutions Act 2016 Act 930, which requires the central bank to revoke the license of a bank or specialized taking institution where the Bank of Ghana determines that the institution is insolvent or is likely to become insolvent within the next 60 days. A video in circulation on social media alleges that the former executive director at the Dankwa Institute and currently the secretary to the president Otre Daku mm -hmm. and others helped the NPP government in the closure of those financial institutions. We called the press this morning or this afternoon um, to clarify some issues to do with uh, a video that appeared to suggest that uh, the Dankwa Institute had crafted a document guiding the government to close down or collapse some banks um, and mentioned some personalities who are associated with the Institute and uh, we decided to respond to it because we found the video to be false. Uh, everything they claim in the video never occurred. It's not the way we do business. It's not who we are. So we called the media to let you guys know and then report that so that uh, uh, the record will be set straight. The issue to do with the banking sector and uh, perhaps the collapse of it, uh, if you know who the Dankwa Institute is and our policy orientation. We are a center-right political party. Uh, uh, we, are, we understand uh, with the MPP this is the connection between us. So when you hear people say the MPP 
or the Dankwa Institute is related to MPP. This is the basis, the ideological agreement, which is the center-right view uh, of governance, is what we uh, we share together. So, on account of that ideology, uh, you know that it's not part of our thinking to be the ones who collapse businesses. We are rather the ones who build businesses. We are rather the ones who champion the cause of business. And so it can never be true that we are set to conspire with a government that is center-right to collapse businesses. That cannot be. And so that was the point we needed to make very clearly and let Ghanaians understand that if ever that video surfaces anywhere for them to see, it is false. It is designed to castigate the reputation of the institute and of the government. And we needed to make that record, uh, set that record straight. So that was why we called the media today. Executive Director of the Dankwa Institute, Richard Ahiangba, has denied the claims and said the institute, in its own ideologies, rather builds businesses not to collapse them. Well, in terms of uh, support or uh, any direct input, uh, we've had... Uh, we had a forum uh, sometime, I think, last year or early 2018 uh, to dialogue around the subject matter. And so our support and our inputs are limited to that level. Uh, we've been speaking about a subject, and like everybody uh, else in the think tank space, we make contributions, and we think that government listens and government uh, picks information or uh, whatever makes sense within the, the think tank space, government takes them. But we have not made a direct proposal to government in one way or the other. But the point of it is that what the pursuit of the government, we share that. And, and if you know how we agree ideologically, there cannot be any departure in position. So what the government is doing essentially to advance the interest of <clears throat> business, to advance the interest of uh, depositors, to advance the interest of employees, those are things that the Dankwa Institute agrees with, and government is doing that. So if there's anything uh, that has come up, it is this video uh, that has created a, an impression that we needed to correct very strongly. Now, lastly, um, when you look at the collapse of some financial Still in the world of business, the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, has authorized all foreign retail traders who are working illegally at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle to immediately cease operations. According to the president of the association, Dr. Joseph Obing, these illegal foreign traders have refused to close their shops after the Committee on Foreign Retail Trade and back on a three-day exercise to cross-check their documents. The documents presented, he said, showed that almost 90% of them did not meet the requirements needed to operate in the country. According to Guta, over 90% of the foreigners have not met the requirements, indicating that almost all ECOWAS member traders operating in the country are guilty of the rules of origin as stated in the ECOWAS protocols, which means that they do not trade goods manufactured in their respective countries. Guta says it will not continent anything on the contrary, as a result has demanded the immediate closure of those shops to avoid any unfortunate situation as tension is mounting on the matter. Guta's call for those shops to close down is based on Section 27 of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, Act 865, which bars foreigners from engaging in retail business in Ghana. Now, Facebook has published its Global State of Small Business Report with Ghanaian SMBs, one of the key in Africa. This is to help lead bear the scale of challenges small businesses are facing during the COVID-19 pandemic and to understand their ongoing challenges and areas for further support. Compiled in partnership with the World Bank and the OECD, it surveyed over 30,000 small business owners and employees from around the world in over 50 countries. In Ghana, the survey reveals that despite the challenges, SMBs are very optimistic about the future of their businesses. Over 69% of operational SMBs on Facebook feel optimistic about the future of their business, with 68% of male-led SMBs currently operational or engaging in revenue lead activities. However, among operational Ghanaian small businesses on Facebook, 
52% expect cash flow to be a challenge in the next few months, while 47% have had to reduce the number of employees as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Of those that are operational, 56% reported that their sales this year were lower than last year. The guitar continues to play a key part in the economic recovery of these businesses, with 52% of operational SMBs on Facebook reporting 25% or more of their sales were made digitally in the past month. Smaller businesses, those owned and operated by individuals, have seen their closures at a greater rate than others, where globally 26% of SMBs reported that they had closed between January and May 2020, over 50% in some countries. According to Facebook, as part of its ongoing commitment, it continues to support SMBs and has created a business resource hub where SMBs can get training, advice and information, including from healthcare experts. Well, that's all for business. Up next is international news. back now let's take some stories from our international partners people's dispatch the pro-market parties in the slovenian parliament have purposefully postponed the slovenian left levica's proposal calling to ensure a mandatory holiday on sunday for workers in private shops across the country on july 16 the pro-market parties in the national assembly have decided to postpone the final vote on levica's pro-worker bill which was expected to have approved on Thursday with bipartisan support. Meanwhile, an amendment put forth by the modern centrist party was supported by the right-wing incumbent Slovenian Democratic Party, Opposition Party SAB, etc. to have students and retirees to work in shops on Sundays has been approved in the National Assembly on Thursday. The progressive sections in the country perceive the postponement of the final vote on Levy Cass Bill to Autumn as a purposeful ploy by pro-business parties in the National Assembly to delay it. The amendments to the bill made on the same day contradicts the very essence of Levicare's bill to provide a holiday for shop workers on Sundays. With the initiative, Levica has insisted on a fair solution for workers, which stipulates that workers should be free on Sundays, but entrepreneurs can work alone if they want to have shops open on Sundays. And, of course, with a basic purpose of law to close shops on Sundays and for 30,000 workers in the store to finally get Sunday as a day off and that's the right to rest. Following the postponement of the vote on Thursday, Levika has stated that today's maneuver of SDS, SMC and SAB is just another sad chapter in a 17-year story of preventing the realization of the referendum will of the people and the wishes of employees to trade. We will not give up in the left. With only a full vote missing, we will work with the unions to build a coalition by the autumn that will be able to take the final step that will finally give workers a day off for them and their families. Levica is a left-wing eco-socialist political party established in Slovenia in 2017. Levica got eight members in the current 90-seated National Assembly, including its coordinator, Luka Mesek. Levica has submitted the bill in May 2020 with the backing of Trade Union of Shop Assistance following the closure of shops on Sundays insisted by the government since mid-March as part of the anti-COVID-19 measures. Well, credit to People's Dispatch for the international stories. Up next is sports. <laughs> 